This is the uh, crankshaft removed from a Royal Enfield Indian Bullet 500 engine that will shortly become ASBO number 50 and we've already had the before ride on the bike and uh, it seemed to go quite well and even ran smooth enough actually but I've got it between centres in the lathe with the clocks on it before I split it because I always like to see what I've got before I split a crank and uh, try and true it to the best of my abilities. Now it's parked in the sort of top dead centre position there. I've got my gauges on, both reading in thousandths of an inch. I've got that one zeroed there, and that one is also on zero there. And if we spin the crank, we'll be able to take a look and see what we've got. Now, interestingly enough, I've got about three thousandths of an inch run out on this one. about four thousandths of an inch run out on that one but unfortunately the clocks needles are pretty much moving in uh, opposite directions and that tells me that as the main difference is at mid stroke that the flywheels haven't been terribly well trued and I noticed actually while I was stripping the engine that the uh, crank didn't spin terribly terribly freely um, I thought it might have been something perhaps in the uh, timing gears or the oil pump drive or something like that but uh, now I've got the crank out alone and uh, I can see the run out there that explains to me why there was a slightly tight spot uh, where the crank wouldn't sort of just spin of its own accord under its counterweight or whatever so I'm hoping that I'll improve on that I'm going to be splitting this crank have a look at the big end discuss it with the owner see what I find and uh, whether he wants to keep the existing big end if it's good or whatever um, that's uh, something we'll discuss and um, I get the flywheels separated the crank pin out and then I'm going to start machining the flywheels down to lighten them uh, ready to become the heart of ASBO number 50. I've got the uh, crankshaft here for ASBO number 50 and I made a film of this crank before I split it and stripped it to check what sort of run out we may have had on it and we had three thousandths of an inch we were clocking on the timing side shaft and we were getting four thousandths of an inch on the drive side and they were happening opposite to one another so basically they were compounding each other and giving an actual run out of somewhere in the region of seven thousandths of an inch so I decided that I certainly like to try and improve on that when I put it all back together and I've lightened the flywheels rebalanced them and I fitted this um, steel conrod with the roller big end and I put them all back together now and trued them and let's have a look and see what we've got here so we're looking at about one and a half thousandths of an inch on the timing side and we've got about one thousandth one thousandth of an inch on the drive side both much lower than the readings I was getting before the needles aren't quite moving in unison although they're not really very far out of step on their rise and falls um, but at the very worst we would have two and a half thousandths of an inch run out there overall and I'm pretty sure as they're almost in step with each other you can't quite sort of take one from the other we're not far off it so I'd say that we've probably got an overall run out of maybe one to one and a half thousandths of an inch there in real terms so that's pretty good and the, uh, the crank pin nuts are done up tightly all I've got to do is put the cheese headed locking screws in and that's done that'll be ready to go back in the engine I was expecting a little more side to side play on this uh, Conrod and big end assembly than we've got there's barely any but uh, it's gone in into the flywheels complete with its own crank pin and 
the flywheels themselves are fine, there's nothing wrong with them, so I presume that this is how it's meant to be. But um, I'll certainly be very careful with the engine when I give it its first start and uh, just sort of run it gently and let it warm up nicely and throw plenty of oil about and make sure everything's all right. We've also got in the, in the timing side flywheel is that spring loaded ball valve, relief valve for the um, oil feed uh, pressure. So that's a good thing. If this is a little bit tight to begin with and doesn't let much oil past it, the relief valve can lift and make sure that the piston and the bore and everything else get plenty of oil and the big end obviously will get as much oil as it wants at the time. Just run it up nice and carefully and run it in fairly gently to begin with and it should be alright because that is obviously how it's meant to be. But um, that crank's ready to go into the crank cases next when I fitted the main bearings and I'm sure that that much reduced run out we're recording there will give these new main bearings a much easier life than the old ones had when we had seven thousandths of an inch run out overall. So um, fingers crossed we should have a smooth running happy engine when all this lot's put back together. That will be the heart of Asbro number 50. Right, well, uh, this is where we're at with Asbro number 50. I've got the uh, crank put back together, obviously, as we've seen and trued, and that uh, nice steel conrod is in there with the roller big end and everything. I've got new main bearings in the crank cases, and I've got the crank cases clamped together tightly. And this is just uh, a sort of pre-assembly check I do. I clamp them together rather than bolt them up, just to make sure that everything spins freely. And um, I'm happy with the job I did through in the flywheels is spinning nice and freely there and the only thing that we've got as I picked up one before is that the conrod is a very close fit between the faces of the flywheels and the thrust washers and presumably that's how it's intended to be there's uh, nothing wrong with the flywheels and the conrod and the big end kit are for such an engine you can see there, when I turn the crank between finger and thumb, pull it down towards bottom dead centre and let go, it returns on its own under the counterweight, so it's spinning freely. But there's the odd, tighter little spot on the big end. They're not tight at all, really. I can turn it by hand right through the revolutions, and I'm sure that once the engine's running and warmed up and uh, done a few miles, that leaves off even more. But it means that I can't spin through a whole revolution of the crank between finger and thumb, although the crank itself, as we see, is free enough to turn and return under its own counterbalance at any point of rotation, so I'm very happy that I've got the crank trued up really nicely. And uh, I've also checked and blown through there to make sure air passes through and I've even squirted light oil through and it goes through the big end and into the conrod and out all right so I think as long as um, I start this engine up when I'm ready to and just sort of run it at a fast idle for a while good while let it warm right up and um, just be fairly gentle with it for the first few miles I'm sure everything will be okay but um, it should run nice and smoothly as far as the crank and true in the crank is concerned and I think I've got the, uh, the counterbalance nicely sorted as well so I can carry on and put the rest of the engine together I've got the cylinder barrel to shorten next and then that'll have to be bored to take the oversized American high compression piston but we're on the home straight now putting it all back together because I've already got the cylinder head ready and everything so uh, shouldn't be too long subject to getting the cylinder reboard uh, when we see this up and running again. Just quickly, just to add to uh, what we saw before, to show that there's no concern here. That's me spinning the engine, giving it full revolutions via the conrod. So it's not actually even what I call a tight spot that uh, fitting uh, issue between the flywheels of the big end but I don't know why it was made like that they could have given it a little bit more 
side to side clearance. It's almost as if the crank pin wanted to be a thou or two wider, I don't know, but I mean the, uh, the flywheels were in very good condition. The crank pin and conrod came as a set. The flywheels are pressed fully home together on the crank pin and the nuts done up and that's how it is, but um, I would have just perhaps expected a little bit of flop side to side on the conrod, but uh, here we are, we'll put it together. When it's time to start it, start it up and just warm it up nicely, steadily, and uh, go from there. That's uh, obviously how it's meant to be. Well, I've just run into a rather interesting little dilemma here, and that is, I thought I'd trial fit this piston and just check that it all fitted the, uh, you know, the gudgeon pin fitted the small end of the conrod and everything nicely. As it does, but I thought the small end of the conrod looks really rather wide. I thought I'd just try and see if it's not too wide for the piston. And um, guess what? It is. I'm trying to do this. The, uh, I'm trying to hold the camera and try and sort of show. There we are. That's the piston of resting the gudgeon pin bosses are getting trapped on uh, the sides of the small end there of, of the conrod because it's too wide to go into that piston. Now this is um, the American made 9 to 1 piston but here we've got the original Enfield piston and this one literally so it goes three quarters of the way on but it's sort of binding a little bit there on the small end it's not there's no real sort of float or free play from side to side on that so what I'm probably gonna have to do it's another good reason for just clamping the crankcases together rather than bolting them up I'll have to separate the crankcases again for access and I'm gonna have to carefully I'll have to wrap everything in cloth and protect it I have to carefully grind the width of that small end on the conrod down a little so that it'll fit inside there with a little bit of side clearance to spare and then finally we might have a bottom end fit for purpose but that would be a nasty surprise if I put it all back together and uh, put it in the bike before I attempted to fit the piston luckily I found it when I did and uh, I'll deal with it before we go any further, but uh, certainly wasn't expecting that. I've separated the crank cases of Asbro 50 again. We've got the crank out, and here it is. And before anybody kicks off their soft aluminium protectors in the jaws of that vice, and I'm not part in any sort of twisting forces on the crank or the conrod or anything okay that's all quite safe and secure and I can better illustrate what the problem is here's my piston and I just can't get that over the small end there of the small end of the conrod so just to illustrate again I've got the original Indian Enfield 500 piston here that does actually just about it almost goes on but it doesn't it doesn't go all the way even that that would be too tight to go on all the way so what i what i intend to do is i'm probably going to carefully remove a millimeter or so's width on either either end of the small end eye there and just free up a little bit of clearance because you also do need the piston to be able to sort of like float from side to side a little at least um, you don't want a tight face to face fit there at all and help oil get in to lubricate everything and keep it cool and uh, obviously I need to remove some metal just in order to be able to fit the piston anyway so that's what I'm going to do next and then once that's sorted I'll put the crank back into the crank cases and bolt them up because I know that uh, it spins freely in the main bearings.
and then I'll be able to build the bottom end up for keeps. So I'll just deal with this and then I'll try again. Right, here's the small end of that conrod again and I've skimmed down either side of the small end boss now and my piston will fit on it nicely. There it is. And I've got just a little scope for any take up side to side if it were needed and also a little bit of an access area for oil to get splashed in when it gets thrown around and lubricate the gudgeon pin and the small end bush and the piston gudgeon pin bosses themselves so I'm much happier with that well <laughs> I'm miles happier with that just because the piston fits but I've got that how I want it as well now so I can put the crank back into the crank cases now that's the, uh, the gudgeon pin is also a nice sliding fit through there so that's good I covered the crank up obviously to protect it when I was using the uh, linisher disc on the grinder to sort of just face them down a little. I'm so glad that I hadn't bolted the engine up, the bottom end of the engine up and put it back in the frame and built the primary drive and everything up and bolted the gearbox on because uh, I don't think I would have been able to do a satisfactory job of that in situ without worrying about particles from the grinder perhaps going into the crank case although I would have stuffed rags in there but from an access point of view it might not have been a goer anyway so I'm so glad I tried the piston when I did anyway time to get this out of there now and back into there and get it bolted off